Thank you, Jill. Boy, it's a game of attrition at times. Mm -hmm. On first down, after that mental mistake by Lionel Turner, Luke. Kyle Williams gets the sack. That's six sacks on Leak today. One of the things I think Florida's defense has troubles with, there's Kyle Williams, is sometimes when they run some stunts, they run some twists, they get past those guys. That time it was just Kyle Williams getting the sack. It wasn't his son or her son that got the play, but she's just as happy. All defensive linemen are all the same. <laughs> Well, we have reached the end of three. That's the end of the third quarter with our score, Florida 19 to 7. We'll return to Tiger Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. Ah, uh, you got to be a warrior. <laughs> 19 to 7 as we get set for the start of the fourth quarter. With Jill Arrington, Todd Blackledge, Fern Lundquist here at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. And Florida's Chris Leap on second and 20 rolls out, being chased. And he's free now. Leap looks downfield and decides to keep it wise. Did you see Lionel Turner that time? He, he stopped that time. Well, we've reached the end of three. We begin the fourth. Tigers hoping for something to cheer about. What's impressed yeah. you so far? Well, I'm impressed with Florida. I'm impressed with how Ron Zook has kept this team together. You know, and in today's society, today's culture, he even told us that it's hard to keep a team together and to keep team as the focus. But they are that way. And but for LSU, it's put up or shut up time now. Great teams, championship teams. Find a way to get it done, even when they're not playing their best football. We'll on find out now. Third and 15. This one will be unsuccessful. Now well, let's go down once again to Jill Arrington. Jill. You guys were talking about that players-only meeting that Florida had. Well, Rand Carthen called that meeting, and he told us that the team was just vowing to hang together to salvage the season. He said it was a time for them all to vent, to start with a clean slate, to finish off the second half of the season. And something interesting he said was a lot of us players didn't come from winning high school teams. We came to Florida for a championship. Well, I think we'll see what happens. Indeed, Jill. Thank you. And Eric Wilber on the punt. Well, sends this one very deep, and look at this. Oh, what an effective weapon he has been today. And did you see him hold up when he punted the ball? I mean, that's pretty impressive. I just want to follow up on the one thing that Joe was saying about Rand Carthen. I think that injury will be critical in the fourth quarter. If they want to run the clock, they'll miss his senior presence. Well, there's a certain consistency on this graphic, huh? Yeah. Punt, 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 int. And uh, the field position hasn't been anything that you want to talk about in a loud voice. They start this time from the five. 19 to 7, Florida. Mock rolling out his end zone, fires it out to Vincent, he's got it. And he is tackled at the 12. Oh, one of the themes that Ron Zook has been preaching to his team is that they are not out of the chase for the SEC East. These are the teams with two conference losses who have reached the championship in previous years. Probably most significantly, the only team from the East that's done it with two losses, Florida, 11 years ago. Yeah. Well, they've already lost to Tennessee at home. They get Georgia later in Jacksonville. So, uh, that's kind of the thing they're hanging their hat on, and they're playing like it today. On second down, Mark, handoff. Ouch. Ouch. Man. Now let's go back once again to New York. Here's Tim Brenda. Vern, a team that really does have the similarity to Florida today, knowing that they have to play with a sense of urgency, is Notre Dame. A rugged four-game stretch beginning with Pittsburgh, and look at that. Julius Jones, 25 yards. They're up early. The Fighting Irish. Back to Vernon Todd. All right, Tim. Well, like Todd said, uh, Tyrone Willingham hearing a little yeah. uh, cacophony there. Again, it's the expectations at a place like Florida, a place like Notre Dame. Third down and two. LSU only two of ten so far today on third downs. I'd say this one is pretty big. 
handoff left side. They've got the first down as Vincent breaks over left tackle. Out across the 15 to the 17. Looks to extra curricular. And the flag is dropped. Yeah, a little loss of poise that time by the Florida Gators. We've seen it by LSU. And here's the penalty. Dead ball. Personal foul. Late hit against the defense. The is 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, there's a difference between an effort penalty and a uh, lack of concentration or a mental mistake penalty. This is a mental mistake penalty. Plays over. He's not going forward anymore. It's over. Leave him alone. That was Dwayne Dixon. Of course, they could have called face masks too. If they wanted to. Daryl Dixon, beg your pardon. Dwayne Dixon is the tight ends coach of Florida. Here's Mock underneath. Skyler Green got some blocks, got some speed to the 48 yard line. Johnny Lamar got him, 19 yard gain. Daryl Lee has to run about 30 yards back to get his helmet. He lost his helmet back way behind the line of scrimmage, but a well-executed wide receiver screen. And Skyler Green broke a nice tackle from Daryl Dixon and added about 10 more yards to the play. Johnny Lamar with the tackle at the end of the play. A little stiff arm from Skyler. And LSU in Florida territory. And this has become a rare trip to Florida territory. Here's the option. Mark, a little hurdle to the 43 yard line. Matt Ferrier with that tackle. We go back once again to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vern, Arizona State's Andrew Walter, six foot five, and he can find receivers very easily with that height. Skyler Fulton on the receiving end. It's ballooned to 38 to 14. Whatever happened to the Ducks? They were once number 10. Now they're in danger of losing their third in a row. I think it was those uniforms that they wore on the road <laughs> early in the season. Yeah. Second and five. Here's Mark. Handoff Vincent. Hit at the line and no gain. Reed Fleming, number 40, was one of those who made the tackle. And Mo Mitchell was the first one to make contact. Mo Mitchell is playing a nice ball game. I mean, he is 6'7, 340 pounds. He was an offensive lineman for most of his career. They moved him to defense this year, and uh, he's doing a nice job of just eating up some space on the inside and not letting those big offensive linemen push him out of there. Well, this one's fairly significant. Yeah. Third and four. With 10.35 to go from the 42-yard line. Walk out of the shotgun. Quick flip. Skyler Green at the 40, just inside the 40. So now a decision to be made by Nick Saban. Well, and I think you go for it here. You're on the left hash. I think you, you roll your quarterback out to the right. And you give him a run pass option on fourth down. All right. Charlie Strong, first year defensive coordinator, Florida. Nick Saban, fourth year head coach, LSU. Fourth and one. Option play. Mock keeps it. Doesn't get it. I don't think he did. Nope. You look at that spot on the other side of the field. That guy right there spotting it. It doesn't look like they got it. I thought they would maybe go a rollout and give Matt Mock a run pass option instead of running the straight down the line option. They're not even measuring it. I mean, Matt Mock is wanting them to measure, and the referee's saying, no, it's not even close enough to measure. He tried to reach the ball forward. But good defense against the option by the Florida Gators. So with 9.43 to go, the ball over on downs. 181 yards they've given up today.
Leaf with a handoff. Jim Davis Walker, number 24. See, I made the point earlier of how important it is that they don't have Rand Carthen in the game right now. I mean, he's a fifth-year senior, their leading rusher, one of the leaders of the team. He's out, as well as Deshaun Wynn. So now you've got Faison, who's a sophomore, and Jim Tavis Walker, who's a redshirt freshman. And you really wish you had your veteran guy out there at this stage of the football game to run the football. Second down and nine, Florida, with 9.08 to go. It'll be Walker going right behind the block of Billy Latsko, number 42. Now let's check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Leak and Mark, their respective numbers for the day. Chris Leak, 224, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Matt Mark, one INT. Get all your complete college football stats at CBS Sportsline. Dot com. Third and four. Boy, they've made some big conversions today. They're going deep over Randall Gay, and it's incomplete. Intended for Carlos Perez and Florida will punt on fourth down. Well, that was a good defensive call by Will Muschamp and Nick Saban because Florida was expecting blitz, so they were going to throw it quick to get the first down. LSU played zone, and... Chris Leak really, uh, you know, that deep throw was just kind of a throwaway or a secondary type place to throw it because it wasn't open where he thought it was going to be open. Skyler Green opened the scoring in this game by returning a punt 80 yards. Eric Wilbur has had a wonderful afternoon punting other than that. Tricky play. And here is Skyler Green at the 15-yard line. Tackle at the 24. LSU went for a blitz, but Wilbur got it off, and until it's up to the Tiger offense now. Ninety-two thousand and seventy-seven in attendance at Death Valley Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, nineteen to seven, Florida. Underdogs, but playing very well in that role on the road first and 10 from the 24 four man rush mock with time Clayton down low around the knees to get it and he's out to the 36 with a 12 yard gain well Georgia Tennessee four and one going into their encounter in Knoxville tonight South Carolina one over Kentucky on Thursday they're four and two overall but in the SEC conference standings one and two and out west LSU comes in undefeated but trailing now Auburn three and zero, oh, and Ole Miss two and zero. Oh. Arkansas losers earlier today at home against Auburn ten to three here's Mark got a man Henry Henderson and Henderson with the first down at the 41. That's a gain of 23. And a pair of nice plays in a row. We haven't seen LSU string many plays in succession today with positive results. Two good plays in a row that time. Two nice throws by Matt Moss. Again, if the defense wants to focus on Clayton, find your other targets. Devery Henderson, the slot receiver this time, makes a nice catch over the middle. Four wide receivers set for LSU. First down and 10. Here comes the blitz. Good pickup. He's got Clayton, and it's almost it is intercepted. Oh my goodness. It is picked off by Keywan Ratliff. There's a flag down as well. It's in the area where it might be holding against LSU, in which case Florida will decline the penalty. Oh. Holding against the offense. The penalty is declined. First down. Keywan Ratliff, that is the second interception of a Matt Mark pass today. Uh, and they've done a great job of anticipating when the ball's coming to Clayton and breaking on the football. They just beat Michael Clayton to the football, and Charlie Strong, he knows, yep, penalty against them, our ball. Defense come get some Gatorade. Now Matt Mark 
As Kiwan Ratliff celebrates on the Gator bench, Matt Maw can only think about what's going on today. He took his dental school admission test on Monday, and this day has become a root canal. First and ten. At the 41 yard line. And let's spend another moment with Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vern, you know, one of those teams that could be flying under the radar in the Big Ten is Purdue. Here, Brandon Jones takes it in from a yard out. Along with Michigan State, look out. In a wild and wacky Big Ten, they could be a factor. Back to Vernon Todd. All right, Tim, second and seven here with 6.49 to go. People are walking out of Tiger Stadium. I mean, this is uh, not what the folks here in Baton Rouge anticipated to see this afternoon. Here's the sweep. See, after facing around the right side. You now, something interesting, the, uh, the student section is still filled. I look directly across from us at the uh, 25 to 30 and 40 yard line seats. A lot of empty seats over there. Third and two. Big play again right here for LSU's defense and the Florida offense. Right now, Chris Leak is doing another thing pretty well. He's milking the clock. And he has really had good poise in this football game today. He's milking the clock, letting it go down as far as he can before he snaps the football. Up the left side. Oh, my goodness. What a catch by O.J. Small. Now here's Corey Webster heading in the other direction, but it, the officials are...